that was a life-changing experience. All right, I'm gonna cut to the chase. I am here to talk about the Mario movie. What can I say other than the wait was so worth it? And the wait for a sequel or potential spin-off is going to be torture. Even now, the movie continues to do extremely well. Nintendo's gonna see this and be like, huh, we should continue this. The Mario movie had so much love put into it. The animation, facial expressions, the comedy, even the music with Mario references and such was top tier. Now, let's dive into the plot. Note, spoilers are ahead, so click off this video if you haven't seen the movie yet. Okay, so we all know the plot, but it's the story and the characters itself that the movie shines on. But of course, not everything is perfect. Let me draw my negatives, because there are barely any, if I'm being honest. And no, this isn't my bias, because I'm a Mario fan. Yes, it is. Shut up. Okay, so I felt that the movie went a bit too fast in most parts. Like, the pacing needed work. Like, when Mario was sent into the Mushroom Kingdom, we're already headed into Peach's castle in like a minute and a half. And the Mario and Peach meeting fell fast as well. And their journey to DK's area was short. I'm not saying for like 20 more minutes of stuff, but I think maybe some small few more minutes would have been good. But like, when Mario went into the Mushroom Kingdom, he should have had like a few more small reactions to the whole area in the beginning. And to Toad, you know, being a talking mushroom man and all that. Sure, he had a few reactions, but they were small, quick, fast, and they didn't like dive too much into it. He just said, oh, tiny little mushroom man, and is it a dream? And that's it. That's it. That's it. That's all he says. Not like a, okay, I'm, I gotta be dreaming. Come on, I gotta be dreaming. This can't be real. This can't be real. Uh, a talking mushroom man. I, I just I sent to a pipe into a, a different world, and I see a talking mushroom man with things everywhere. Like, that should have been, like, more reactionary to that. I think that should have been, like, added, maybe. And I think we could have had a bit more with the trio of Peach, Mario, and Toad to show the relationship a bit more. You know, show, establish a friendship. Since Mario is Toad's best friend. And, you know, maybe a bit more backstory with Toad. Because we didn't learn much about him or from him. Aside from the fact that he's just a dude that Mario's ran into, that he's going to the kingdom, he's an adventure guy. Uh, I'm assuming since he just um, showed up there, that he might not live around there. Like, he might live far off, maybe. So he knows the princess, and he knows um, uh, the kingdom. But I believe he doesn't live there because he had a backpack and everything. So I'm guessing maybe he traveled from some other place in the Mushroom Kingdom, then went over there. There are some hints that this Toad is Captain Toad, since, you know, the backpack, the Captain Toad music playing, and you know, how he loves going on adventures and stuff, and he was even singing a little song that he was about going on an adventure and all that. So, yeah, you never know, who knows, maybe we might get a Captain Toad movie. And I also felt that Luigi was shattered for a majority of the movie when he got kidnapped. Since he was kidnapped, he didn't get him much time to shine. I would have appreciated a bit more from him. He just stayed there in the castle being kidnapped, you know, being kept in, kept in a cage. We all assumed, like, many of us were predicting that he would lead a, uh, a prison riot with the penguins and stuff, so yeah. Sad that it didn't happen. Also, even though it didn't really bother me that much, I did kind of wish that some of the licensed music wasn't, you know, put in there. I did hear and find out that some of, the, some of the Mario made music for this film was cut in favor of the license music instead. Which sucked because um, the music that was cut from the DK section when Mario, Peach, and Toad enter the DK area riding that cart around with uh, the maybe uh, Kong, a Funky Kong maybe, I don't know if that was him or not. Um, yeah, there was a song cut there that would have fit well. So, I don't know why it didn't happen, but eh, who knows. It didn't really bother me that much, but I did, did wish that we got that instead. Alright, that's all my negatives. Now, onto the truckload of positives. Comedy. Wow, okay. A lot of moments in the movie made me laugh a lot. But I think um, uh, I laughed the most in the beginning of the movie. When Mario and Luigi are trying not to get hurt by the dog in their first job. <laughs> oh, man, that, that scene was just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, it, it went mayhem over there. I really thought that a dog was going to, like, 
jump out the window and then fall and then get hurt and then Martin Luigi had to be blamed for it and they you know get ridiculed by stuff. I'm glad it glad it didn't that didn't happen, but <laughs> I thought that was gonna happen. Okay, now the voices. Everyone was so hesitant of Chris Pratt as Mario, myself included. I wasn't really like, you know, maybe like I, I was gonna give him a chance, but I wasn't like, you know, like like uh like oh no no how's it gonna sound like and, and then in the trailers it didn't really sound that much good. He sounded okay, but not like the way you expect him. But in the movie, he did an amazing job as a character that I actually forgot at some point that it was actually him. Because in this movie, Mario and Luigi are from Brooklyn. They're Italian, but they're from Brooklyn. So they don't really have the Italian accents for them. Uh, but they did do an Italian accent. They both did. Chris Pratt did an Italian accent and sounded phenomenal. But then after the commercial ends, um, uh, they dropped the accents. So yeah. And I know many of us were upset that Charles Martinet um, uh, didn't voice Mario in this. But in this movie, he cameos as like Emma um, uh, and voices a character resembling Jumpman. And to top it off, he even voiced Mario and Luigi's dad. Yes, their dad. Yeah, they have their family members shown. Loved it. We've never seen their families before, and I was so happy to see them. He has uncles, aunts, I think it's another cousin over there, a grandpa. That, I all love that. Thank goodness, I wanted to see that. Charlie Day was the solid choice of Luigi that now whenever I play as Luigi, I can't unhear Charlie Day as Luigi. So, wow, it really stuck with me, um, uh, him being Luigi. He fit the character very well. It was great with being, um, uh, him being Luigi. And don't even get me started on Jack Black or Keegan-Michael Key. Those two were great as Bowser and Toad. Like, Toad, I was afraid that Toad's voice would be annoying, but no, he... He not out of the part with that guy. He had a fun time pl playing him on Toad. And Jack Black as Bowser, oh my goodness. He 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 was he was the best. The best. He doesn't he just really just got into the role like boom. And you can tell he loved playing the character too. On until the joy was a great voice for Peach. And Seth Rogen as DK. <laughs> well, you guys were just a riot. And the same goes for the rest of the cast. They did their jobs right. The movie people really did them uh, their choice them uh I'm a right among when selecting the cast for his um, uh, people. Now, the animation and characters, they were all a joy, and the animation helped show the Mario and Luigi characters themselves, and they were shown just right. Their brotherly bond never broke in this movie. There's no argument or disagreement, nothing, and I'm glad they didn't go that route. I was afraid they would go the typical, oh, I don't like you, brother, I don't disagree, I hate you, yada yada. No, we didn't get that. No disagreement whatsoever. I'm happy for that. Mario has never been shown to be uh, showing that much emotion. I know, except for Strikers and maybe that one, and maybe that scene and other scenes in Bowser's Fury. But in this movie, we finally get to see how he is. He wants to prove himself to his dad and his family. He gets annoyed easily. He doesn't like mushrooms. Oh, and in the final battle, man, we see him bruised up and hurt. Have we ever seen that? No. With Luigi's character, his cowardly nature is displayed to a T, and how his brother always bats him up, even in the form of a flashback featuring the baby bros. I believe after this film, we may see him get out of his cowardly nature a bit in future movies. Please, Luigi's Mansion. Bowser is shown to be a fierce guy who means business, especially in the final fight with Mario. Uh, but his love for Peach... <laughs> oh my god. He's a high school dork wanting his crush to like him back. Oh, also his song for her? Yeah, you're gonna love it. Toad just brought a smile to my face whenever he opened his mouth or we saw him doing something. He really is that one friend you just can't be annoyed with and that if he goes away, you'll be sad that he's gone. <laughs> Peach is not the damsel in distress in this movie, and I'm glad, because I didn't really want the typical Mario saves Peach thing. Plus, having Luigi be kidnapped gives Mario more motivation to save the day, rather than helping a random stranger he's never met before. DK was a great rival for Mario, and they still are somewhat by the end of the movie, because their arguments are just... <laughs> oh, man. There's even this one um, Mario Kart session um, uh, before they start driving. DK says to Mario, I hate you. 
<laughs> oh man, it, 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 is, it is a riot. Their, uh, their, uh, their relationship is a riot. Okay, so there was a lot of great fights and action in this movie. The first one I'll say is the Mario vs. DK fight, which was handled very well. The action in this was just wow, wow, wow. And we even get to see small cameos of Diddy Kong, Ditsy Kong, and Chunky Kong. And even Swanky Kong also. Heck, uh, before I forget, Pauline even appears as a mayor of Brooklyn in the early part of the movie. And she speeds. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see them all in this. And if your ears hear well, you can hear the DK rap. And the losing theme for one of the DK games. Next, we gotta talk about the Mario Kart section, cause oh my god, I was fanboying so much! They had everything! The anti-gravity, the car selection, music from Mario Kart 8, Rainbow Road music, the battle on the road! And yes, the terror, that is the blue shell, comes and attacks Mario and DK, and they get swallowed by the eel that everyone is ter terrified of. And then the rescue has Peach going full Elsa, and having Mario and DK stop the army in the kingdom. And of course, some uh, glimpse of Fire DK. I hope we see more of my item uses from DK in the future. Give us Tanuki DK. Cat DK. <laughs> oh, and King Bob bomb and King Boo have cameo appearances too. In the final battle in Brooklyn, again, Bowser was not holding back. Mario was hurt. Visibly hurt. I am glad they win this route. And then, Mario and Luigi teaming up with star power. Amazing. And yes, the star music played. And everyone, including Mario's family and former Spike, cheered for the bros. The movie ends with the bros living in the Mushroom Kingdom, Bowser captured, and teases a sequel with a Yoshi egg cracking in the sewers of Brooklyn. Now, a lot of people didn't see the life that Yoshi teased at the end, as we already saw Yoshi's early on. So they were like, why are we seeing Yoshi yet? We already know Yoshi's, Yoshi's already there, so why would we see that? And many were actually, and myself included, were expecting Rosalina. Because, um, there's a Luma named Luma Lee, who's a bit... Uh, weird. <laughs> you gotta watch the movie to find out, I don't wanna spoil it. <laughs> uh, yeah. And we all thought that since we saw Luma Lee, and we had Peach mentioning Galaxies, and we had Galaxy Music, that Rosalina would show up at the end. But honestly, thinking about this, even though I did also think that she would show up, I don't think she'll show up until like maybe a tease at the end of the sequel, and then appearing fully in the third film. Uh, Rosalina doesn't seem like a type of character to appear in the first film as a tease. I don't know, I don't see, see that, I, I didn't see that happening at all. I, but I was gonna be like, happy if she showed up at all though. I was happy to be, to be wrong about that. But I still didn't think she would show up at all. Others also wanted Daisy to show up visiting the kingdom, or the Koopalings being hired by Kamet to free Bowser, or Bowser Jr. showing up, or have Wario and Waluigi be teased. Uh, okay, so, now, for Daisy, I think she'll appear in the sequel. A same goes for the Koopalings, maybe. And no idea for Bowser Jr., though. But as for Wario and Waluigi, um, I don't see how they could be introduced. Because, remember, Mario and Luigi are from the real world in Brooklyn. There's no way some two characters who um, uh, have the same similar names as, War as Mario and Luigi would be in the same area looking like them, you know, being in the, like, exaggerated versions of them. It would be super weird in the real world having um, uh, wacky double games of yourself like that. It'd be weird. It wouldn't make sense also. You're realistically thinking, um, uh, that's not how it's gonna work. Uh, so I only think that it would work, um, like this. Kamek creates Wario and Waluigi with DNA from uh, Luigi and Mario, or we have two random guys in Brooklyn who live in Brooklyn who are jealous of Mario and Luigi's success, and they sneak their way to the Mushroom Kingdom, run into Kamek, and become wacky versions of the Mario Bros. And that's how I see it. As for Yoshi, it made sense. Remember, we saw Yoshi's, but we didn't see the main Yoshi we all know. Like, we all know there's a lot of toes, but we got the real toe we all know, the main one. So, 
it made sense to him to show up because I could see them doing the Mama Luigi thing and hence why I said that I think we'll see Mama Luigi taking a, a larger role in the sequel. He'll have to be way more brave and less cowardly if he wants to protect a baby. And if Daisy shows up, yeah, that also. Finally, let's talk references. There are so many. Not only from Mario games and the music, but other Nintendo stuff too. The pizzeria is Punch-Out Pizzeria. Mario has a Super Nintendo system and was playing Kid Icarus. Why would they put random Nintendo franchises in this, even though there's a movie all about Mario? Of course, though, other films are not um, shy from showing other, you know, universes, you know, other franchises in their um, uh, things. Disney's old, Disney's old Stranger, I'm pretty sure um, uh, Pixar's not, and I'm pretty sure Illumination does it too. So, yeah, I think with this, that we're going to get other Nintendo films, especially with the Mario movie doing so well. A Legend of Zelda movie, Kid Icarus movie, Metroid, uh, the list goes on. Heck, even Fire Emblem, maybe. This movie is for the Mario fans who grew up with the character. And even if you were the biggest the biggest Mario fan, you'll still have a good time with it. And even if you're a parent who's not a Mario fan, but your kids are, they will have a blast and you bring them over there and I'm pretty sure you will enjoy it too. I had the biggest smile on my face watching this. And I will watch it again and again because it's that good. I just wish it was longer, and even though, if, even if it was longer or not, I did not want it to end. Like, immediately when it ended, I'm like, oh no, it's over? Yeah, I wanted more of it. I wanted to see more and more and more. I would, fit, I would sit through three hours of the Mario movie. I would. I would. We'll have to wait till maybe, I don't know, 2029 maybe for the next film, or that rumored DK film, or if we get a Luigi's Mansion film. Heck, I don't know, we might even get, like, shorts or specials, maybe, like, you know, um, uh, 30 minute or an hour specials, um, uh, through, like, online or whatever. You never know. What did you guys think of the movie, and what did you guys wish would have happened that we didn't get? And how many times have you watched this? Let me know in the comments, and in the meantime, I'm calling the plumbers.